Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we will be talking about immunoprecipitation. Immunoprecipitation in short form PPT. Now, immunoprecipitation, what is it? Immunoprecipitation is a technique to precipitate some proteins from a mixture of other proteins using specific antibody against that protein. See, you know antigen and antibody reactions can be used in many different ways in different part of uh, biological techniques uh, because you know antigen binds with antibody and the antigen antibody reaction is very very specific. So, let us say we have an antibody, let us say this is an antibody with FAB region and here is FC region. Now, this antibody can interact with the antigen using FAB region. This is the antigen for example. So, <clears throat> wherever we have antigen, if you add antibody, that antibody can bind to that antigen with a specific interaction. right? And if you look at the cellular proteins, if we crack a cell open and we get some protein mixture, different types of proteins may be there, protein A, B, C, D, different types. And if you have those different variety of proteins, let us say from a cellular extract, we have different varieties of proteins, protein A, protein B, protein C and many more type of proteins. Now we add the antigen, uh, I mean antibody. Because the idea is that these proteins that we see here, they have a specific antigenic determinant region. Antigenic determinants means a section of those protein which acts as antigen, the epitope or acting as an antigen. So, if this protein A, B, C, all these proteins have a specific region acting as antigen, let us say this is a section for A, this is a section for B, this is a section for C, these are the regions of this protein of those proteins that are acting as antigenic determinants or epitopes. Now, if we design antibody which will specifically bind only with C protein but not bind with A and B. Because let us say the, our idea is to take this protein C out of the mixture of other proteins. right? So, we have the mixture in the solution, we have it in our test tube or, or let us say we have in an ependor. Then we add our designed antibody, we specifically designed the antibody in such a way that the FAB portion of that antibody will bind with the C protein only or the antigen that is present in the surface of C protein only. So, once we add that antibody, I just uh, draw it a schematic Y shaped structure. If I draw the structure, we add that antibody, that antibody will bind with this C antigen but it will not bind with B or A because of the antigen antibody specific reaction. The antibody is designed only to interact with the antigen present in surface of C. So, now this antibody will bind with this C antigen and it will drag this C antigen down, right? it will drag it down. This is the idea, we add our antigen antibody to drag protein components down which contains that antigen. right? Now, in this case, how would antigen antibody complex will be dragged down? For that, we definitely have to add some insoluble particles, right, which will precipitate, which will help in the precipitation of that antigen antibody complex. Because once we form this antigen antibody complex, this is up to one part, but after that, we need to, we need to set it down, precipitate it down. To precipitate it down, we need to add some precipitants. And in that case, the precipitants are, in this case, beads beads. It can be agar, agar rose beads or different types of beads are available in the market. Now, that beads are fixed with that antibody. Something should be fixed with that antibody which is insoluble. So, that that antigen antibody complex should be taken down to the bottom. So, we get kind of pellet like thing. So, we take out rest of the solution from the top and then we take out the precipitated content, then we release this antigen antibody complex from the bead to check out which protein precipitated down. right? So, by this way, we can take out a protein from mixture of protein solutions and we can do this stuff using uh, direct in vivo assays, I mean take out the content, the different body fluids directly, plant uh, fluids as well as animal fluids directly and can do this assay, check this process 
uh, for the precipitation purpose. Even we can design these antibodies uh, against any of the plant uh, uh, proteins also. Right? Because antibodies are very, very important things. We can design it, we can produce it in large scale and we can use it to do that. This is in a sense is an immunoprecipitation uh, which uses antigen antibody complex and an insoluble bead for precipitating a particular protein. Okay. Okay. So now, till now we know about the immunoprecipitation process. The basics of immunoprecipitation is to use an antibody to track down and drag a antigen containing protein. I mean not an antigen, you know sometimes you think antigen means something to cause disease in our body but it is not always like that. A protein which has a specific region and the antibody can have affinity to that region. So we have an antigen antibody reaction. So if you have a protein in your body, it has a particular section uh, amino acid structure, a protein domain which will interact with the FAB portion of that antibody and as a result antigen antibody reaction that protein antibody reaction antibody is also a protein so it's a protein protein reaction in you know, over overview that happens and it drags things down so we can use it to watch and view protein protein interaction beautifully how i'm telling you because this is the basic process of immunoprecipitation where we have our desired protein let's say among this mixture we have a b c three different proteins different uh, sections, different sequence of proteins are also available and now we add our antibody with attached with beads. So see antibody, all of the antibody of ours will be attached to the beads. Once we add them, beads is in, bead is insoluble. So obviously that antibody will bind only with the protein C because of the specific interaction. It will drag the protein C down because of the beads, it will precipitate. So we can separate things out. This is the simple type of and simplest type of immunoprecipitation, the basic immunoprecipitation technique. But here we are looking at co-immunoprecipitation. Co-immunoprecipitation is a process where we track and find a large protein complex from a mixture. Because you know most of the pathways that you that are, that are going on in our body are due to the protein-protein interaction, right? So sometimes we need to understand which pathways are going on, which proteins are interacting for a, take a JAK-STAT pathway, multiple proteins are involved, MAP kinase pathway, multiple proteins are involved, even all of our metabolic pathways, multi-protein involved pathways. Now all these pathways, proteins are always interacting with proteins all the time, even in the during the developmental phases from the morula till the development, all the cells, the proteins are made, they are interacting with themselves. So if you want to find what are the kind of protein-protein interaction is going on, we need to look for larger protein complexes. There won't be small single proteins like this, there will be large giant protein complexes which are attached one with another, interacting one with another. So there are two things that we can check using co-immunoprecipitation. The term co means, co means together, right? So here, if we, we can look for large protein complex where we have different segment of proteins, they are interacting all with each other. So this is a protein complex. Now we can use the antibody which can bind with one of that protein complex. There are multi proteins. Let us say here this is a three protein uh, complex where we use this antibody which will only bind with the B antibody. B, B antigen or B protein only and as a result as all of these proteins are involving together if this antibody if we add all those antibody to this B protein and they are attached with beads so what will happen this antibody will drag they will bind with only with B but they will drag B as they are dragging B they are also dragging A and C because A and C are attached with B that is why it is called co immunoprecipitation that means immunoprecipitation process occurs together proteins between different proteins so they are dragging everything down right the precipitants should be uh, larger here but it will eventually do and in this case precipitation is much more easier because the giant complexes are already formed and uh, this is one way of looking at it another way of co immunoprecipitation is to check the protein protein interaction so now if every time we add, uh, first we add the antibody specific against B and uh, we get 
this complex let's say we are looking at multiple complexes uh, we have another complex where we have three different uh, proteins also we have z y k we have another complex this is another protein complex now if we add this antibody against b it will drag only this complex it will not drag this complex similarly after that and normally when you look for co precipitation we produce antibody against all the different uh, say in this case let's say we don't know what are the proteins that are interacting we want to know so what we'll do we guess things right we form hypothesis we guess things so we design antibody against a particular protein we know which is there in the pathway but we don't know how it is exactly interacting let's say that protein is b and we design antibody against b so antibody binds with b drags thing down then we design another antibody against the c and this antibody will bind to c and then again it will precipitate down this a b c because everything is connected then we do it for a so every time when we do it with a specific antibody and it precipitates a complex and we find every time the complex is the same complex consisting of thus three proteins we know that these three proteins are interacting otherwise every time when we drag uh, the antibody against b c or a the whole complex is precipitated so by this way we will understand what are the proteins that are interacting with each other this is one way to, to understand and ensure the process but there is another way to ensure that process and that is called pulling down this is a kind of slight uh, change of the co amino precipitation technique uh, so let me erase this stuff it is the stuff and tell you how that thing works in this case so in this case of pulling down so we are talking about pull down you know the term is very straightforward you pull something down to the bottom and the idea is also same in this case we have a bait and we have a prey bait you know bait can catch prey right so prey is the protein we don't know the function of we don't know how that protein is inter interacting right so we design that bait so how could you do we have our protein we have our protein that protein is attached with a tag it's attached with a tag which is called fusion protein right different types of this are tag tag means after this precipitation take place when we run gel electrophoresis we can see the presence of all these proteins due to the presence of the tag because the tag can be uh, if you say radioactive the tag can be detected by uh, it can be fluorescent tag like gfp or something glutathione uh, sulfate so these are uh, can present thiosulfate for example the tags can be gst glutathione thiosulfate it could be uh, gfp green fluorescent protein it could be polyhistidine so these are the different uh, molecules that can act as a tag uh, which we attach to our bait protein so say uh, we are looking for a protein pathway say we are looking for a protein pathway where x is involving with something and then it is giving us a product by somehow it's it's giving us some response we know the response because we see the phenotype of the response the uh, physiological aspect of the response we also know that this x protein is definitely involved but we don't know where this x protein protein is interacting which protein with this x protein is interacting so we have the formulation of two ideas that this x protein can interact with y or it is interacting with a but we are not sure because we know from whenever we take out the solution from this stage we find three different proteins x y and a but we get the product so we want to know how exactly x is interacting with y or a or both whatever we don't know to get this product or the response so how exactly x is interacting with which protein it is interacting so we take that x protein in there that protein is our bait we know that protein and then we have the fusion protein tagged with it and also we have a bead attached to it you have a bead attached to it 
because obviously precipitation requires a bead uh, the unsoluble bead to be two things taken down so we have the bead now after that we add the mixture we add the solution which contains this x y a this mixture we take it from the uh, organism and we put it there now among them remember we have we can have either y a or x so x will not interact here in, with x so it's kind of not required but what is interacting y or a now we see y has a structure like this and let's say a has a structure like this so see a can interact with x in this case for example actually is interacting so what will happen here as this a has a particular specific region to interact with x it's a kind of antigen antibody specific because if this is a protein protein remember in this case we are not using any antibody but we are using a specific interaction as this a and x can interact with themselves because they are interacting inside uh, during the cell during this process so they will interact and as a result we add beads either to the bait or we can add this this is called the prey uh, the protein which we add later is a prey because that's what we want to catch using bait now we can add this bead to the prey or bait whatever so as a result of this bead it will be pulled down so we have a precipitation right now from that precipitate we take it down we uh, remove all this other all the other things and then we break those proteins out because there are interaction between them and then we take it and load it into the SDS page and check the molecular weight because we know the molecular weight of X so if it is bound with each other X and A so the molecular weight we will see will be higher and using that we can guess the molecular weight whether it is an A or a, a or Y right so by this way we can understand that during this pathway X interacts with A X will not interact with Y right because this is a bait prey system that is again used using co-immunoprecipitation and this is called the pull down method because it is pulling things pulling a protein protein uh, interaction pulling a protein protein uh, unit down and that's how we do it okay